Representative from Connecticut, Ms. Hayes is recognized for five minutes. Thank you. Welcome, Acting Secretary Sue. I would just like to state for the record that we have asked for multiple hearings on child labor on this committee. The Democrats have asked, and the majority has refused to do that. So I would welcome the conversation to have a real honest discussion about what child labor looks like in this country and ways that we can address that as a problem. Um, thank you for being here. I jotted down a few things before I get to my questions. Um, I just want to ask you very directly, have you ever been an employee? Have I ever been an employee? Yes, I have. Yes. Does the Department of Labor have any responsibility to workers, employees, if you will? Yes, we do. So the idea that only business owners should have any input in this space is completely flawed because a majority of your job and the work that you do affects employees, am I correct? Yes, our fundamental mission is to serve uh, the working people of this country. That's what I thought. So it's actually quite appropriate that someone who has been an employee would lead the Department of Labor. Yes? Yes. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Congresswoman. <laughs> I also want to bring up another th um, interesting thing that I heard. In my district, I've seen a lot of businesses who hire individuals with disability with disabilities, cafes that are thriving, new businesses that have opened. It's actually a very um, just exciting trend in the district where the community is involved and invested. We've also seen a lot of second career older Americans um, who are getting trained for a new career as a result of workforce development. Can you tell me why the Department of Labor even cares about programs like diversity, equity, and inclusion? Thank you, Congresswoman. So as I've said, we have seen record labor force participation of prime age working people in this country. We're also seeing record levels across various communities, including people with disabilities. And that's really important to us. We have an Office of Disability Employment Policy at the Department of Labor because it's so important to make sure that when we create opportunity, everybody gets to, gets to participate. Um, Part of what we are seeing when it comes to individuals with disabilities is because of um, really changes over the last couple decades, uh, more and more individuals with disabilities are doing work through something called competitive integrated employment, which also allows them to participate more fully in, uh, in, in the workplace. This so is good diversity, for them. diversity, equity, and inclusion includes bringing all people into the workplace and making sure that they have a full uh, workplace experience. Yes, yes. That's what I thought. Um, thank you for sharing that because I think people are confused about what that means and how we all benefit when we put more people back to work. Another thing that I heard come up in this hearing over and over is just the idea of people working in person. And I think that if we are looking, if our programs are geared to training the next generation workforce, we have to be creative and innovative and get people out in the communities. and to your point that you said over and over, showing up to work does not mean sitting at a desk all day. Sometimes it's face-to-face -face in the community talking to people. Um, in the time that I have left, I will get to my actual questions. I'm really, really interested in the career training fund that the Department of Labor has uh, included as part of their proposed budget, $8 billion for this program. I have two questions. One kind of dovetails on what I just asked. How would um, this program incorporate the existing workforce but also keep pace and prepare for a changing workforce? And what um, supports would be provided for uh, participants? You know, things like food, transportation, things like that, that people need to remove the barriers so that yeah. they can get this training. Thank you so much, Congresswoman. So I often say that I think of the workforce system as a form of infrastructure too. It's not physical roads and bridges, but it's the roads and bridges that connect people to the jobs they need and employers to the people that they need. And that infrastructure has to be as strong as our physical infrastructure. So the programs we've been talking about today are part of that. Registered apprenticeships, for example, sector-based uh, um, training, uh, the role of educational institutions. So the $8 billion grant is meant to help to supplement to make sure that every individual who uh, is looking for a job uh, and who needs to be in a training program to do so has some support to do that. Um, it's one piece of the overall puzzle for how we meet this 
demand that employers have, and again, in a, in a growing economy, uh, we are seeing more and more employers looking for workers, um, we, that, that everybody has the support that they need to do that. And we look forward to working with you uh, and other members of the committee and of Congress to Thank you. Do I'm that. over my time, but I do appreciate you being here. And the last thing I'll just say is that we worked really hard on the legislation to get people back to work, to make things here, and to get language like fair labor standards into that legislation to make sure it affects our communities. I would really appreciate a commitment from the department to make sure that that is followed all the way through so that my constituents feel the benefit of that work. You have my commitment, Congresswoman. The representative from